I'm Simon King, and this is What's Wrong. Hello, how are you? You know what's wrong? You're not fucking watching this. You're listening to this. How dare you? How dare you? I've told you many times that you can see my face. Is it that I am too beautiful? Is it that you will fall under my spell and not ever be able to do anything other than listen to the podcast? <laughs> perhaps, perhaps not. Anyway, I don't know why I went all weird there. Perhaps, perhaps not. <laughs> I am uh, I'm very happy that you are here. I'm glistening from the sweatiness of the heat. It's hot, so I decided to bundle up. That's what I do because I don't believe in I'm a I'm a I'm a cold I'm a cold earther. I don't believe I believe heat a cold earther. I believe heat is devi- de- designed by NASA, designed by the the Canadian goose comp- people. <laughs> heat is a lie. All right, there's no such thing as heat. It's all we're all frozen now. I mean, I'm feeling it. I I'm do a, think it's very quite real. I'm a cold earther. I even said to you as we were walking up, yeah. like, I I too have a flannel. Yeah. It's in my backpack yeah. because it's too hot. I was fine until the ice I keep near my crotch melted. Mm, well, in the just. winter it doesn't melt. See, that's the thing too. The fact that it's May, yeah, and it's plus 30, mm-hmm. that I have a real problem yeah. with. And not cuz I agree with you. I'm a yeah. cold earther. You're a cold earther. We're think, all, this is the cold earth podcast. I don't think there's anything wrong with anything that's going on. <laughs> Uh, uh, it, but much like my own farmer's almanac, yeah. uh, I'm recognizing I'm having to take my long johns off a month and a half too early, and that I'm uncomfortable yeah. with. I shave my thighs. <laughs> the jeans I wear are tight enough they do it for me. It's it, it, it's a one-stop shop. Yeah, I should probably introduce you, I think, maybe. Sure. Should I, but I should say this, too. Um, thank you very much for listening. I don't know what the rumors are. I haven't killed Mikey. Mikey is still alive, technically. I don't know where he is. He was supposed to have returned. What I think has happened is Mikey doesn't really Mikey doesn't know where we are. I've never told him where the studio is. I only put I put a I put a blindfold on him and I bring him here, usually sedated. So he doesn't really know where this is, and I won't tell him for security purposes. You know, I don't want him knowing where it is. I don't want him to start podcasting with strangers. No, He'll no, just no. wander in. He'll just wander in and be on someone else's podcast and be like, what's happening? And now now I've lost him. I can't lose him. He's mine. Anyway, so uh, Mikey is not here for this podcast. He will be back, um, like I said, still technically alive, as far as I know. And <laughs> but my guest today is Mikey plus one. Plus, a, a, we don't need a Mikey when we got an Alex Sparling, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. <laughs> Oh, there's, there's two cameras. Yeah. yeah, you just realized you were being filmed. Well, you forget. I'll go in and out of it for sure. <laughs> this will make a great episode of the first 48. Oh, we're on camera? <laughs> well, I, mean, like, <laughs> well, I don't know. That. I don't mean any of that. I didn't know it was being recorded. I thought we were just shooting the shit. Well, we were just acting out the thing that I just did, the murder oh. that I just did. Oh, no, no. I didn't. That thing I said about her fingers, I didn't know. None of that's true. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a surprise murderer. Just a real surprise murderer like he didn't know it was going to happen. What? Well, why are you asking so many questions? <laughs> like he's not That's too funny. For, not prepared for it at all. <laughs> he's just like a master criminal. Like this guy will, th- like when you get in there, Jenkins, when you're going to interrogate this guy, know that he's going to play stupid criminal, <laughs> stupid criminal with you. <laughs> and the guy, they think he's just a genius because he can't be so fucking dumb. Fuck, so you know He's like got dirt in his hand from the burial ground. He's <laughs> like, oh, I gotta put this somewhere. This is my lucky rock. <laughs> I, so uh, I, I have listened to the podcast uh, multiple times, mm-hmm. uh, and I've had the absolute pleasure to hang out with you uh, mm-hmm. several times. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and then sitting here doing this with you, much the same way I get to sit down with you, mm-hmm. I am always, I forget how fast you move. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, am I. Am I meant to listen and just do I get to enjoy it? You got to jump in. Ah, fuck. Okay. You don't jump in. This is like a, this is like a standing on the side of a river, and uh, and your little dog just jumped in. And but it's, I don't it's like getting wet, and I can get a new dog. <laughs> you can get a new I dog. I am my father's That's son. True. He doesn't. So I got shit for this. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I, I go camping uh, uh, back home in Yellowknife every summer with mm-hmm. uh, my boys back home. Yeah. And I've just I've never like I I used to like camp like the first two or three years that we did it. I go swimming with everybody, and then the older and older I got, get becoming that much more of uh, my father's son. Mm-hmm. I just stopped liking getting wet, and I even asked my dad about it too. I'm like, "Do you like when did that happen?" He's like, "Yeah, ex- exactly your age." Like, I just really, I fucking can't stand it. You just don't like getting wet at all. Oh, I know. Like, I like getting. I, I like. I'll, I'll shower. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, shower. Yeah. But there's. Few so I had wondered like, what was going on. I was like, I got a sandblast <laughs> chamber at home. It hurts like a motherfucker, but you do it once a month. There's nothing I hate more than getting wet when I don't want to get wet. Yeah, I can't enough. stand it. Like if wow. I. If you're gonna, I, you're gonna hate the second part of this. Looks up at buckets. Oh, Christ. Uh, 
<laughs> like we just it was a new segment that I thought you know who will really be cool with this is Alex. Yeah, by all means, you just look down and there's like there's like a poncho over the equipment. You're like, why is that there? It's like, oh no! Just rope comes down into shot. <laughs> Alex is looking. So is it just is it just like so is it's just a general mood? You're just like rain. How are you about rain? But rain I could do because rain I know is going to happen and I can yeah. dress for it. Like yeah. I, I, like it's a. It's forced. I, I can. I, I. I love being able to do to layer up and to dress for it, kind of a thing. But like, uh, like if I were to just get pushed into the pool at a fun party. Oh yeah, no, that's I'd lose not. My that's fucking. Mind. Yeah, that's not fucking I'd lose good for my anybody. Fucking mind. That's not fucking good for anybody. Yeah, because I find too like <laughs> what a lot of people don't consider is when you get wet. Then there's also uh, you're getting dirtier because you're just picking up everything. Mm-hmm. Between you and the towel, whales, and then are you dry off. Oh, they're just monsters. <laughs> Look at uh, the barnacles, right? That's dirt. Barnacles. That's wet it's just dirt. dirt. It's just dirt. It's, that just e- wet it's dirt, dirt that eats. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's dirt. Not into it. Not ah! into it, man. There's a reason they they have muscles on the menu, but not barnacles. No one wants a barnacle. No, exactly. Much barnacles stew. <laughs> Do you have hemorrhoids? No. No. What on the menu? You've never. <laughs> it sounded like it sounded like you were ordering something. I was like, I, uh, sir, we don't eat them at this restaurant, but I can get them for you if you well, want. Exactly. <laughs> to co- quote Kevin Dillon, <laughs> where is our way? Do, <laughs> do, do you have hemorrhoids at this restaurant? Well, it's uh, in the afternoon, but, but when they run out, had? Gonna, no. So that's because that's the, is that a problem? Because I, I I've seen I used to I from the nineties. Remember in the nineties there was the preparation age commercials. You remember it those didn't ones? go away in the nineties. Hemorrhoids are still a thing. Hemorrhoids are still they weren't totally just a part of the grunge thing. Absolutely a thing. <laughs> I thought it was like when you sang like Eddie Vedder for long enough, just you pop a vein in your asshole. <laughs> no, I, just, I, I think I, I think just like uh, stress uh, drinking and reading too many comic books that'll do the same thing that Eddie Vedder's uh, established career will do yeah. for you. But I think that's note, what even flows about. So we got we got a bidet uh, when um, uh, my girlfriend got pregnant. Cause yeah. It's very much for her. And yeah. I couldn't have been more thrilled. Yeah. Do you have a bidet at least? I don't have a bidet, though. Oh, my no. guy. No. You need it. But on the same getting wet note, that one gets really tough. Yeah. See? Because uh, that, yeah, that's cause, the whole point of it. Because then I don't have to wipe, right? Because you're, yeah, you're you're bideting. Bidet. But then I am soaking wet mm. afterwards, and I end up going through more toilet paper. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. See, I never thought about that. Like, uh... Like a bidet, yeah, I guess, I mean, on paper it makes more sense. Like, because I was in Asia once, and they have the hoses next to the toilet. You just spray your ass with yeah. the hose. Yeah, it makes a ton of and sense. And then the joke I made was, I'm like, it's so nice that every, because I drink from the hose at home, so I'm so nice. <laughs> and everyone was like, you're not supposed to do that. And I was like, what? And I acted like a really dumb foreigner. I am a dumb foreigner. And I asked, <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, how great would that be? Because you're like in a stall, and you got the hose on the wall, and the guy next door you is being an idiot. And you're like, just leave. <laughs> <laughs> Just having a, a shit host fight, you know, like shit host fight, like the old shit host fight, you know, a classic shit host. I believe fight. that's one of the Ong Back movies. Shit host fight. <laughs> See, I, I, well, I don't, we've got I'm a not, name for the we've got a name for the episode. I'm, shit I'm host not fight. I'm not a big kung fu fan, but I would watch that in a heartbeat. I would watch that. It's just Jackie Chan Jet fights Li. people with Jet Li and Jackie Chan fight with bidets. But I mean, Jet Li's also a great name for a shit host fighter. Oh, it is Jet Li. Yeah, shit host fighter, the Jet Li. <laughs> <laughs> shit host fighter that's a that's an underground thing like in in um in uh, what was it rambo 2 when they found him stick fighting in the jungle but it's actually shit host fighting do you remember rambo 2 did you I never it? wasn't allowed to watch it oh really no oh you didn't miss much unless you wanted to join the army i've been to hope <laughs> it, so rambo 1 good movie rambo yep. 1 guy comes back ptsd vietnam yeah they fucked with me I, i'm go- i've gone crazy not a great guy problems lots of mental problems goes in the woods fights brian dennehy that's the movie, essentially. I think that's the elevator pitch. I mean, the the elevator pitch is we got Brian Danahy. Yeah, I think the elevator pitch was you know Rocky with guns. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it was. And I, they were like, "What?" He's like, "You know, guns." And they're like, "Yeah." The first Rambo I saw was First Blood. That's great. That's a great one. That's good. Rambo. So Rocky One and Rambo One, both really good movies. Rocky One, great movie. Rocky One's a really great movie. Rocky. And then all the other Rockies are like, let's just shove Hulk Hogan in this motherfucker. What? Why? I never, I never, I never gravitated towards it. I just didn't, I just, that like, I think, you know what it is? It's like, it's that forced masculinity that I just don't overly care about. You know, and I think that's why. Kettlebells away. No, but that's why. <laughs> but that's why guys like Will Ferrell were so funny. Yeah. Because it was that unearned confidence. Yeah. That's the joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that entire era of yeah. of, well, of that, hero. It's that weird thing too. Is like is like especially in the eighties, it came down to it was propaganda work for the military and like all Top Gun and all that shit. That's propaganda well, for work sure. for the Air Force. It's all propaganda shit. And so you look at it now and you go like Iron Eagle. I've talked about Iron Eagle before. Have you seen that movie? No. Okay, it's an eighteen-year-old uh, high school student who can't get into the Air Force. 
um, who his dad gets is he kidnapped. colorblind? That's li- is that the sequel to Driving Miss Daisy? I think that's Driving Miss Daisy too. I mean, Little Miss Sunshine. Dri- 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 fucking Christ. <laughs> Driving Miss Daisy too, Talladega Daisy, I and it's Little just Miss where Sunshine. they race. I don't but know it's why I it's look. where he races around, but he's got what's her face in the back. So just it's a NASCAR <laughs> with a seat in the back, and she's like, "Turn left here." He's like, "Yes, Miss Daisy." Like, <laughs> Talladega Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> just e. <laughs> she's like he trying to keeps hitting her with a handbag he keeps she keeps hitting him with a handbag and he's like ah oh don't put that evil on me and Bobby. all the other all the other drivers are racist like they still are and all the, <laughs> the nascar drivers it's the only stretch limo nascar <laughs> <laughs> but she's still gonna get out through the windows. Like she's still gonna climb in and out through the windows. Just this ninety-year-old rich white lady. Just ah! <laughs> see. I'd like. I'd, I mean, I'd watch the fuck out of that. I'd movie. watch that one. I'd because uh, uh, well, it's earned confidence. You know. Oh yeah. And the real strength is making somebody do something for you. Yeah, right? that's why I do this. This is the only, this is the only power I have. Fair enough. <laughs> and that's why I'm sad when Mikey's not here because that's really the only. I mean, I've never had a cult before. Now he's the closest I've ever got to a cult member. What is your favorite and least favorite thing about Mike? Uh, they're both the same thing. Go ahead. He's not here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, if he was here, it'd be my favorite thing. But it's also we get a lot more done. <laughs> Actually, no. I do love when you ask I him to bring him so something much. up, and he just you can kind of like. Sometimes yeah. he's on top of his phone. He's like, ah, "Well, I mean, I'm still just doing." He's it the from best. The phone. He's the best human because he's the best human because he's just so incredibly positive. Like in a world, oh, of, especially show so. business, in a world full of absolute miserable cunts, which is what show business mostly is. He's just this beam of happiness. Yeah, he's he just, would, He's a puppy. He's he would, wonderful. I mean, the and amount, he's smart. The amount of times he's been such a sweetheart and just like, "Hey, I gotta go home." Yeah. But would you guys want to come out to like just near Maple Ridge? kind of a thing do you want to come over and hang out yeah, yeah. kind of a thing yeah. now it's 11 I offered and I yeah, love yeah, you yeah, yeah. See, you're just such a sweet dude <laughs> so and then weird. I did it once yeah. and it was a great night oh yeah 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 yeah. you want to hang out with Mikey it's oh always for sure when we, we, for a brief period of time we did the podcast at his house and then what, what we'd do is we'd go up to the roof deck and we would look out a, across the city oh, right. and we would get shittered between each episode because he's right by the river no, no, no. He's downstown, and so oh, we would go up. Now? We would oh, go okay. upstairs. So we would, we would, we would uh, do the first episode. We'd have a drink before the first episode, and then the unsuspecting guest would come up, and we would drink after. And then sometimes we'd be like, "Let's do two. And then by the second one, we're all just so fucked, and it's the most wonderful, fun environment. Like we're having a party, and we just happen to be podcasting it. Right? That's fucking sweet. I think this, but it's kind of like that here too. Like we're having a fun, great time. And like, it, I think it's just kind of maybe. F- Dare I say, follows us around. <laughs> we have this kind of fun atmosphere. Oh, for sure. Because we're not taking it seriously. Because when no one's listening, it doesn't fucking matter. I mean, I got to be honest. I I do very genuinely look up to you, uh, and I've listened to this a lot. So this is, this is a lot. You're happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. Good I'm Lord. thrilled, but I'm trying to figure it out. You fought so hard not to come in the door, though. <laughs> no, I just wanted to finish my smoke. I <laughs> had that butterfly net and the whole deal, and I was but yelling and this taser stick. But it is still too. It's funny because like you are uh, a, like a barrel of fun all of the time, yeah. and it really it it, it, it it's uh, it, it's a paid party. People are surprised the because they think that I would be a based on my but material. You, you also are the sweetest human being at the same time. Like mm. no, no, for for <laughs> sure. The amount of times that I have. Uh, uh, just been either on the road or like uh, alone at home, sitting on my bidet, uh, uh, and just like just cranked a, it all the way up to our Kelly in a bad space. And I'm like, hey, I, I I need I need the right kind of help, and I don't need I don't need advice. I don't need you to tell me it's all gonna work out. Nah. I just need you to send me uh, the impression of Chinese dad explained Star Wars for the first time. And you go, I don't have that clip anywhere because it's fucking borderline legal. Yeah. <laughs> I will I will re-record it for you right now yeah, and yeah. send it to you. And it saved my life a couple of times. And a lot of people don't know that about you. And, I and, and you know You're what? Total... The radical left would have wanted you dead. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you're sitting there on your bidet, cranked up to R. Kelly. Don't know what you're doing. Just nothing. <laughs> and you're like, you know what I need is an idiot. But here's the thing. Here's the thing is, the great thing about being a funny nihilist is that this <laughs> you don't often hear a lot of funny nihilists. I'm like, none of this matters. Waka waka. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know exactly what you're saying. What's the point? <laughs> Joy buzzer. That would... <laughs> the point is laughs. But I'm just, I feel like to me, it's like, it's so fleeting and it's so, all of it is so 
I don't know. It's weird. It's like because as a comedian, I get out so much of my thoughts and feelings, and I express how I feel about the world and everything, and I get to do that. I don't get to be as fun as I want to be because that's just not the way my brain works for that. For sure. With my friends, I get to be as fun. Like this podcast, one of the reasons I do this is because I get to be fun. Like yeah. I get to be who I am. This is who I've been my whole life. I've always been a fucking maniac. I just I, I when I when I started doing it for a living, it changed the dynamic. But, you know, when we fuck around, we get stupid. Totally. But, like, that idea of, like, uh, like it can be sillier. Don't worry about Don't worry. Don't worry. I need, also, I think I might need you to re-explain what nihilism means to me. Um, but, <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't worry about it or anything. So, um. <laughs> but, do, but do, you find, do you find that helps you as a dad? Yeah, I Cause, think so. Because, like, I, I, I have, because uh, I just had my kid six months ago. Yeah. Uh, and I six have. Six months already? Holy shit. Uh, it's nuts. Damn. It's, but I've already, I, I've just, like, completely subscribed to, uh, and I haven't talked about it with my wife. But it's just, yeah. I, 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 if if she's upset, it's just, hey, you're okay. This is okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right before I left the house, we were flying, you know what I mean? And I, yeah. I, I, I dropped her just enough that she kind of knocked her head a little bit on my collarbone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and starts bursting into tears, and yeah. just like my immediate response is, "You're good. It's okay. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. It's okay." And I don't know how much that detracts from it in the long run. And like, like do you stop validating it's, those it's feelings, so hard or, to know. or is it, or is it not like, "Hey, this is such a small problem. We're gonna be okay." And that's the way to look at life because that's the way I do. I think the like, thing is, I think I think you're right. I think it's a little bit of validation and a little bit of optimism. So I think it's a little bit of like, I understand you're feeling this way. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the reason you're feeling this, your feelings are real. Regardless of why you're feeling this way, regardless of whether it's a big, your feelings are real because you're feeling them. I validate that. But I also think that it's going to be, here's how it's going to be fine. Here's how this, so with my son, what I do is uh, if he talks back, I exile him to boarding school. <laughs> I haven't seen him in years, but I think he's doing great. He's got a face tattoo. I am two. He's two. <laughs> he's he's two. A face tattoo. <laughs> he's six now. He's six now. Yeah, he's fucking jacked. Just kidding. What? <laughs> oh my god! This Can you imagine? Just beat the just, shit out of you. Just, just lifting weights. Oh, like I'm I just go, I snap, <laughs> and just raise my kid to be like Schwarzenegger. Just like ah. He started bending bars. He started introducing you to sports you don't know about. <laughs> you know one thing, son. I'll tell you this: weakness is terrible. Be strong. Win. <laughs> just, like, just like weirdly. Whatever, Dad. I'm on my way to High Life. I'm six. <laughs> <laughs> I got High Life practice. I love the idea that he played High Life. He's like the only six-year-old playing High Life. It's all these fifty-two-year-old men, <laughs> and he's like, but he's got the same attitude. I just can't throw it quite as well. But damn it, Jimmy, I know what I'm doing. Your wife hates you. It, it's funny. Whenever I think of my kid, I, I always start writing like Dangerfield jokes in my head because like it seems like that's the kind of joke that, you know, yeah. like my kid, you know, I caught him smoking. I was like, wrong brand, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just like all that stuff. Well, I hope I hope that happens because right now with uh, with her, it's just like I, I recognize that her favorite thing is it's I it, it's 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 the easiest form of comedy because I just repeat what she said. Yeah. Which is that's what people ha, do. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and I just go ha, 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 and she loses it. And I've never been happier pretty on funny, stage. Though. It's pretty funny. Oh, she's so she started doing this thing where she just sucks on her pot of lip, like Yeah, yeah. And, and she'll just dead stare you yeah. and just keep sucking on it. Yeah. It's my favorite. You imagine if that if a heckler did that? <laughs> like halfway through your set and a heckler just starts sucking on their bar and like oh my god going, but, but, like, oh, think, fuck. but that's exactly it's just like the sweetest thing the sweetest moment of my life uh, immediately trans to in any other realm in any other person yeah the most insulting oh move. yeah yeah the it's, most it's, insulting if move. it's anybody else it's a prick move like oh, if it's anybody else it's a prick move but if it's your kid you're like nah it's cool <laughs> what's the what's the uh, two things one where's the other beer uh, um, two sick. Which uh, one do you want? Um, do you want the sure? Do you want yep. the pale or perfect. do you want the? I love it. Plisner. Which, uh, perfect. All right, I'll give you the pale. I'll have the Plisner. What's uh, uh? I've got more. I just don't have them here. What's the dumbest heckle you've ever gotten? The dumbest heckle I've ever gotten. God damn! Like as in dumb? Like as in, like it's just not a good heckle, or as in someone just does not get it? They're just stupid. It's a bit of both. Like, what are you doing? Um, I did have someone heckle me why once. <laughs> Some lady just yelled from the doctor. She goes, "I don't think that's. I don't she think just that's goes, why. I don't like, think that's dumb. I think but, that might be the most spitefully rudest thing you could but say." But it was at this moment where, like, I was, I was killing. Everything was killing. It was going great. It was one of those sets where you didn't see it coming because it was like everything's like you're nailing. It's like all, and it's, it was like a dark room in like Edmonton, and I remember it was like 
she must have been in the way in the back because there was some bleed from the stage light. So I could see the first little bit, but in the back. And then I'm just like, ba 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 ba. Audience goes, yeah, applause. And then you just hear, why? So she's like, <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even know if it was directed at me. I, here's That's the thing. exactly it. She's not heckling you. She's I didn't, heckling the audience. I didn't respond. She doesn't get it. And she just hits the audience. I, Why? I honestly thought that I just caught her at that moment, you know, when the, like, the beat stops and someone's still talking really loud. Like, I thought I just caught her at that moment where she's talking to her friend. So I didn't want to attack her. And then I was like, huh? And then there was nothing. I was like, I'm going to leave that be because I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Like, she's having some existential crisis in the back. Like, that's her big question is, like, she just came online. She's like, why? And I was like, I was like, it's too complicated to explain. That's so funny. <laughs> Throw a copy of every that, religious I, book I, I have at her. I got to be honest. I think that would fuck me up more. It was really like, weird. For, for one person in the audience to question the rest of the audience is to, in what world I haven't are thought you about genuinely that in a long time. finding that funny? Why? I've, <laughs> if I've, I heckle someone, I'm going to do something like that. Open it, not directly at them. But if I ever, I mean, not that you should ever heckle comedians unless they're your friends and you're fucking with them. That's yeah. Right. But like, if I ever heckled a comedian, I think I would totally do that. Podcast dog. I think I would. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. We should have a podcast dog tune. Maybe I'll do something in post. Podcast dog. Let's all just cut that up. It'll be just great. Just a quick ad. You know what I love? I love Purina, especially for my dog. <laughs> Let's <laughs> today's podcast is brought to you by dogs. The concept of dogs. <laughs> Our friends for one hundred thousand years. Dogs. I've gotten the weirdest tackle because uh, I haven't done stand up. I've mm-hmm. done maybe I've done a handful of shows. Over yeah, because you escaped right three years. Yeah, yeah. Like you're in the witness protection. You got out. It's been really nice. Uh, uh, I, 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 I dream of the freedom. I mean, I can tell you all about it. It's pretty sweet. Uh, but. Um, it, it still sneaks back up on you, and I got the weirdest heckle word. Uh, so I, uh, do you remember when I did that reality TV dating show? Yes. Uh, with a number of other Vancouver comics. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. It just, it's a credit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> free drinks is but what it is. It's not free, <laughs> oh, it is not free drinks. It's not free drinks. It's not free drinks? Oh, yeah, we both got, uh, you both get a $50 uh, gift certificate, uh, <sighs> and then that's it. Canada. So, but that's it's such Canadian TV bullshit. Oh yeah, it's like look like you're having a good time. Here's enough for three drinks at Earl's. <laughs> at so Earl's. it's one drink. Um, you guys have Bellinis. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll give you forty bucks if I just a quick bump. Just, just idea, a quick bump. Just a bump and some Bellinis. Like if you could uh, for drug, you would you you get better use for drugs out of that fifty bucks, wouldn't you? I think so. I think yeah, so. I've never touched it, but I, I would only imagine. Um, uh, but I. And so now, like, I, I just never think about it because it was just yeah. this dumb, fun pocket. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it was... How long ago was what, that? Like 10 years ago? That's close to it. was like seven or eight. Jesus Christ. But it was just so silly. It was so stupid <laughs> and just like totally hamped it up. And then uh, at the time, I was living uh, um, in uh, like a, a borderline old folks home. Like, because I, I moved down uh, from Yellowknife and... Yeah. And you were I, looking for I chicks. had some money. I hear you. I was looking for <laughs> You're and like, I was like, you're like, you're like who, uh, who, who, who here has got a short lifespan and uh, needs a little bit of love? Yeah, I was like, hey, mom, you need a retirement plan? Do you want to help me pitch on this house and get some old Spallings puss? in oh, town! Old puss! Uh, no, uh, but I was living in a borderline retirement home, um, which is very... So they're borderline retired, or the retirement home is borderline people They're They're like the last two years before you are done, and you have to go away. Like, Oh, like, okay, so like they're the like, amount it's, of like, it's not that, quite a home? No, but like I would have to like the amount of times that I would uh, like watch this woman with her grocery cart and, and just yeah like, oh, fuck it. Do you need a hand? Yeah, like, can I help you? And they're yeah. like, for sure, I would love that. And then you end up having to put this whole turkey in in the fridge for them. Uh, and you're like, one, you're not going to be able to eat all this. Two, you're not going to get it back out. She thought it was her grandson. The whole turkey. Yeah. It's hot outside. And then he's sweet. I bought him a new Put vest. Put him in the fridge. I bought him it's a new hot. vest. <laughs> she's just knitting a vest for the turkey. But <laughs> I love that you come by two days later. There's a rotting turkey with a toque on and a sweater that she's making. And the biggest bummer is that it's a really nice outfit. It's <laughs> yeah, a he really looks good. nice outfit. And she makes good clothes. She's she crazy as shit. Best buttons on this dead I turkey. I love the God. How fuck would that fun would that be? Just to like make little outfits for turkeys and around about Thanksgiving, just go to the grocery store and just put them on the turkeys, and people would come by. And be like, why does this turkey have a sweater? I and, it, and it has like a name like Neil or something on it. So people are like, is this, what the fuck? <laughs> this is Neil the turkey. Those are my favorite trolls are just uh, 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 vegans uh, yeah. who are never going to actually, they're never getting their point across, but yeah. they will go pour milk all over a grocery floor. Kind what, of they, what they don't know, what vegans don't realize is if you want to stop us eating meat, go lick it all. We won't eat the meat you've licked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go lick all the meat. <laughs> 
You just get out there. You just lick a pork chop. I'm not touching it. No, that was it. too good. Are you it. running bits by me? No, this I'm not. Is bullshit. No, I'm not. This is not how this works. <laughs> I might go back and find it. So, 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 so anyways, so uh, with that reality TV dating show, um, I'm not just bringing it up because it's my only credit, um, but... Uh, now you have two. It's weird. It's uh, it's true. <laughs> uh, Sorry. I am the only straight white kid that made it to the finals of the NBC uh, uh, stand-up for diversity. Oh, yeah. 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 It means nothing. No, but the diversity was your material. <laughs> they were just looking at you and like, He's, his material's handicapped. This is bad. Bring it on stage. Let's go. <laughs> his material's the we'll one We'll put him in the Connors if all else fails. His material's got to make a wish. <laughs> but he, he... Oh, fuck. <laughs> his material's dead. <laughs> Can we put Bush Party on a roller coaster? <laughs> this, is dog, this is dog shit. Bush Party on a roller coaster. I love that band. But he, uh, or sorry, so so the reason I bring it up is because it's, uh, uh, I, I, after I kind of quit everything, yeah. I got off social media, which has been so sweet. So just good, like completely right? off of it. So good. Uh, and I've just been getting sent these links um, from a number of people, and it's all the same link. And I just like, for immediate, I was like, I'm, I'm, this has got to be spam or like um, you got hacked kind of an idea. Yeah. Finally downloaded it and it's uh, my clip from uh, First Dates mm. is back uh, <laughs> like viral through like the reels. Oh, really? And I was like, oh, this is stupid. I don't want to watch this again. But I clicked on it and I figured like, because when, when, when I did the thing, mm -hmm. it was like, you know, there's no real time comments. It's just yeah. whatever uh, yeah. uh, from friends and family or people that knew you and did it excuse me uh i feel like i'm a beer me um but uh uh but i've not done that one yet i gotta I, do that one. Oh, you gotta do it i got i had it i had fucking harris on my oh Amazing. jesus you're fucking crazy <laughs> oh wow you gotta do the fucking podcast Sorry, we love you, Dave. I love him so <laughs> much. But oh no, that's right. Now I know what to tell me what you're talking about. But I'll open the I'll open the link, and it's it's like I expect like a, a, a few like just yeah. like whatever yeah. comments. I'm not fucking with you. It's over yeah. three thousand comments. What on it? Oh yeah, and and there are only two types of comments. Uh, is uh, first of all. Everybody shits on the girl that I went on the date with. Yeah, like how she was a bit of a monster, wasn't she? No, she was a fine human being. She, her and I just didn't connect. Yeah, period. Right? She's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, to, to, to her credit, as soon as I recognized this isn't going to work, you I just started fucked. hamming. Yeah, 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 I just yeah, started yeah. hamming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was fun for me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, there's only two comments, on, two types of comments, uh, uh, and there's either. You know what? He lives in an old folks' home, and I think that's fiscally a responsible decision, especially this climate. I mean, I bet you he's got great neighbors. I bet you he gets to go over every Sunday dinner. And he's got like he takes care of them. He walks their laundry down. He gets to go over for Sunday dinners, kind of a thing. Yeah. And then the other side of comments are, I too have had a head trauma. I understand what that means. <laughs> what a sweet slow boy. <laughs> that's 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 it. That's all I've offered. <laughs> As far as like when my daughter looks me up, my only legacy will be, oh folks, my dad may or may not be a little retarded, but he got a great deal out of home. <laughs> he thinks. He thinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing you just That's the it. real estate agent saw you come. He's like, this guy's had a serious fucking head injury. Let's see if we can sell him in the studio. Hi, can you help me? <laughs> What do you mean I don't need a bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> How many buckets does it come with? How many buckets does it come with? Here's the great thing. Uh, unlimited turkey with sweaters on, Sparky. Okay. Keep talking. <laughs> Keep talking. It'd be funny if you move to the old folks home and they're the ones helping you. <laughs> oh. You're like, can you help me lift this? It's 90-year-old lady. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> Shaky that, fuck. That, I mean, I, I, I would believe it. Wow. That was my gym in the building. So right? that's your credit. You, you've got other credits, don't you? I don't think, like, nothing that's, like, as significant. Have you thought about, like, uh, you know what you should do? You should do how, like, uh, I the, think it depends the Trailer Park Boys or, like, uh, but Swollen Members or whoever, like, like no, you're right. Those, you should do a tour. With, with Swollen Members with and Trailer the, Park Boys? Yeah, do something, and then, like, I'm also, I'm also on the date show. Like, Cana you know that Canadian fame thing? And nothing against oh, Swollen I, Members. No, I know, but or, I know what you're saying. Or the saying. Trailer Park Boys, but you know what I'm saying? I, like, I that, that level, because I, I always get there two weeks after them, and everyone's always had such a great fucking show. And they always say, like, Mr. Leahy and shit, and then they come to my show, and they're like, ah, why have you got a shirt on? I'm like, I'm not Kreischer or Mr. Leahy, or whatever Mr. Leahy's friend is. I don't know what the fucking fat guy with no shirt is. Who's the fat guy with no shirt? Randy, Randy thank you. Randy. I'm not Randy. Randy, there you go. Randy. Are you I'm a Kreischer fan? 
I, yeah. I mean, he's a party. He's a fu- there's so. a guy. There's a guy who's a fucking party. Because Kreischer's always like someone explained this to me. Um I think it was you, Jordan. Wasn't it you telling me? Like made a point about saying like um uh, like he's just he has just such a great way of of creating things people want to see. Like he'll just be like in a pool and have a band come over and fuck yeah. yeah. And I'm like exact that's exactly what he is. He is cuz a lot of people like I know that he got famous for being the party guy and but he really is he just seems fun all the time. Like it and, and I mean I don't know whether you could take that all the time. I don't know whether you can. It depends on the person. To me, I'm like that just seems I couldn't keep up with it. I think, There's I no think it's a skill set in keep and of itself. It is. In, in and of itself. It's a I don't talent. know how much of it is a st- I don't know how how much I would say he's a decent stand up. Well, I mean the thing is is like is like the, the problem with stand up and this is the thing with stand up comedy is 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 it's so fucking subjective. It's so subjective that like there are people out there. I mean I don't I don't know. Who are your ever, top 3 least favorite comics in town? <laughs> And we're just being subjective, so it's not offensive. Because <laughs> comedy is well, so subjective. I mean, I had you here to talk to you about your comedy, and uh, but you already quit. Hey, man, so I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> no. I'll take it. I don't see this thing, and this is the thing: is I don't have. It's really hard to say, but like, it, and I'm not using, I'm not copping out, but I really don't care as much about material and about comedy as I do about the person. You know what I mean? So to me, because I've been a comic for so long, I've seen people who've been great comics in the beginning and then sucked as, uh, as comedians and sucked as people. Mm-hmm. And I've seen people who've been great people in the beginning and got better as comics. Well, totally. So I never judge them by what they're doing. But also because there are very few professional comics in town that are actually around doing things. You almost never see them. So most of the comics I see are people who've been doing it like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years maybe. And, and those that's you don't judge people who are new. I wouldn't do that, right? It's like kicking over an eight-year-old. What's the point? I get that. I mean, it's funny. To an extent, it is funny. <laughs> I mean, going to sports day and just getting way too into it. I will it. say, I will say, uh, 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 so I went back. Uh, I don't edit this. I know. Okay. I don't give a <laughs> Oh, I don't give a shit anymore. I know you don't give a shit. I don't give a shit I'm just anymore. saying. And I'm also not a mean guy. No, you're uh, not at all. You're you're a really nice person. But you I have very found big, an edge. Uh, but at the same time... <laughs> Uh, but I did go. I, I I think, I think we're. Wh- I did go to an open mic. Uh, uh, shortly before, uh, or like a, a couple weeks ago. I I like a fucking did? idiot. I I signed up for. I signed up. Uh, my buddy, Tyler Smith, runs a brilliant uh, uh show called the Dope Show. Uh, oh yeah 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 uh, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. You're saying yeah yeah yeah. So you do yeah. it sober and then you. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that can reach out. It sounds like a fun thing, but it's just not for. I mean, it's not a weed guy. So yeah, fair enough, man. It's for me. If it was a drunk show, I. But it's not. It's, but every show's a drunk show if you try. Same. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's not the same because you. Same. You go outside. You do ten minutes sober. You do ten minutes sober. Go outside, smoke as much weed as you can, come back in. Yeah. And do that would kill another me. ten minutes because I've never smoked weed. I've never taken. But it's the most fun because you. I, I don't know if you just if you just let yourself get there. Like I smoke, yeah. I I barely smoke anymore. Like I'll smoke yeah. a little, little bit here and there every day, but a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And I just fucking got a grade high again, and it was so much fun. Uh, and, and went back on stage, and just I would love to have seen that. I just had a ton of fun. Oh yeah. Oh, we've recorded because I'm an, uh, uh, it's selfish. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, we've uh, got another clip coming up that's gonna be. <laughs> People That's going, great. did he not keep his house in the home? People very worried about you. <laughs> People are concerned. <laughs> I think he's self-medicating with the weed, with the devil's cabbage. Well, I mean, the weed doesn't help, but the booze does. But the, uh, uh, at the same time, it was like, I so I, I like an idiot, he had pitched it to me in December, uh, and I just was out of stand-up for a while, and he was like, do you want to do this? And I'm like, you know what, fuck it, like... I do. I, I love the show that you built. Yeah, uh, that's cool. I, I do miss uh, doing shows with you. Just a rad environment all the time. Yeah, I'd fucking love it. And he's like, "Cool, April." Uh, and then I completely forgot about it. Yeah. And then he messaged me a week before, and he's like, "Hey, you good to go for this Saturday?" And I was like, "Oh, oh not fuck. for a fucking second, man! I haven't done it. I haven't touched a mic in like months." Yeah. Uh, and so I started immediately calling around to open mics and just trying to do whatever and. And, and again, everybody was super gracious. Like the yeah. community is always so sweet. But uh, there is one thing about a late night open mic that I do not fucking miss anymore. Yeah. Uh, and where I will have no problem shitting on comics is I think there's nothing grosser than uh, comics who don't put the audience and the show before themselves. Yeah. No, that's one hundred percent. You're correct about that. That's that. So that is something that drives me crazy. Like, like all of a sudden, like, hey, this is going to be a long night. There's very few people here. We're all going to take the time 
to shit on the only people here? Yeah. In what world Pun- does that work? Those are the ones, the good ones. They're the ones that came. Exactly. Like, why would you ever be mad at the people uh. in the room? I come from a time when, like, there were, like, two, three, four, five people at shows. That's how comedy started in Vancouver for me in 2000. 2000 was the... Comedy goes in ebbs and flows. 2000 was the biggest ebb. There was nothing fucking happening. Well, but that was right after Y2K. So it was right after Y2K. So we were all dead. Even... We were all zombies. And <laughs> we're all zombies. I mostly, I'm mostly calculator. That's how I'm, <laughs> that's how I work. No, I can't do the math, but it's all my bits. If you put your finger over my solar panel, I go to sleep. I... <laughs> Ah, uh, you don't I believe me? That's how you know your friend's a robot. Is really? you just you just yeah, exactly. You just <laughs> when the next time the Terminator attacks, you just be like just ask him to spell boobies. <laughs> or just ask him to just be like three nine zero three nine No, three what it's three no, hold on. It's it's five three one nine zero zero nine. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Terminator would be like, what is love? And just would collapse. Oh, right. <laughs> but, oh, when, but I hate, there's nothing I hate more than comedians who are, um, there's so many comics out there who like think they're on the edge and edgy and it really fucks it up for those of us who are doing that shit because there's nothing I hate more than going up after 12 guys in a row who've tried to push the envelope and done it so poorly. Yep. The audience has fucking turned on them. And then I got to come up and be like, I got this great N-word joke and I can't do it. That's exactly it. <laughs> it's like, you know. Oh, you the last five guys, you think you can make a rape joke? Work? Yeah. Well, guess what? I, don't I ha- found a different angle. I don't have, you did it. I don't have any rape material, but if I did, you couldn't stop me telling it. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's stunning. That's very well done. <laughs> Do that at your late night open mic. Um, but I, I, I don't find, to me, it's like, I just, I hate lazy comedy. I hate lazy comedy. And that's, but that's Put exactly the work in. It's like, it's like, oh, your first, your first little bit about ordering pizza didn't work, so let's attack the audience. That, it just drives me fucking crazy. It's like the third guy in a row is like, porn's weird. And it's like, what? You're too much for you? It's like, no, you suck. It could be that you suck. Yeah. I've never not been able to say anything I want on stage. I've always been able to say it. You know why? Because I put the fucking work in to figure out how to do it right. Yep. Right? That's how it works. Yeah. And I never understood why people, they take the audience for granted. And you, you really need them. Because yep. without them, it's fucking disturbing. Well, like, if we weren't, if this wasn't being broadcast, this wasn't being put out, this would be odd. If I was like, come over, hang out, drink some beers, and we'll talk into microphones and never use it. That'd be fucking weird, this right? most podcasts that I've ever tried to do. Yeah, I mean, I try to use it. No one listens, but I try. <laughs> but, you know, you know but, what I, I, but I... But I agree with you completely, too, because it is like, I do feel like, to an extent, a part of the performance, uh, like, uh, the overall night of it is, at, like, I would say 20, 30% the audience. Oh, right? well, like, yeah, at least. Like, if you watch, like, if you watch a comedy special, and it's like, have you seen Gringo uh, ba- Poppy? Like, Brandon Schaub? Have you seen any of that? No, I haven't seen any of that. Oh. I heard this I'm about gonna, Schaub. I don't see, know Schaub. I, I'm going to write you down a rabbit hole that will fuck you up. I've heard, I've heard about this, but I, I don't know. I've heard that he's had some issues with his audience not liking him at all. Oh, he's just dog shit. Is he not good? Oh, he's not good. I don't know him. Oh, he's not good. He seems like a nice person. Do you know who I'm talking about? I don't know who you're talking about. Have you seen that special? I've, the new one or the older Gringo one? Poppy. The Gringo he, Poppy. The one oh, he tried to release on Like Marito Lopez's Poppy thing. Um, he's stealing Marito's like Poppy thing? Like three years. Like, what's the deal? Yeah, something like that. Well, he's just like... No, Marito's the Poppy. Well, he's just like... He's, he's, he's a, I'm just saying, like... Yeah. The, like, there's, there's got, there has to be a self-awareness on stage. Yeah. Period. Uh, I, think, I think comedians... This is something I've always said, too. Is like, is like in my dark, murky, underworld part of stand-up comedy, where I exist in the in the... In the dark edgelord comedy land, which I fucking hate because most of the comics who do dark comedy think they're doing dark comedy and they're just being shitheads. The ones that do it well are fucking exceptional. The Stanhopes, the people oh, like that. They're incredible. Yeah. They're incredible. But it's also incredibly hard to do. And so the problem is where I exist, I get these people who think they're telling it like it is. And they come out and they, they always go. And this is, the, this is where I parted, the ways, parted ways with Hicks. It was always like, you people, you people. And I'm like, no, no, it's we are. Like, I did a show the other night. Yeah, I like that. And yeah. I opened with something I almost never have said on stage, especially since I, I don't host and I haven't hosted in probably 10 years, um, with the very rare exception of a, an amateur night or something if I'm helping out. But, um, and I opened the set with, I go, how's everyone doing tonight? And the audience was like, yeah, and I go, wrong. And I was like, <laughs> I was like here's why you're wrong. You're victims of late stage capitalism and you're fooling yourself. <laughs> you're pacifying we're all like this and I'm like but the whole time I'm like I'm like this too I'm just the one here 
sticking my head up to yell about it. It's going to get cut off. It would never work if it was just like, you guys suck. You're fucking stupid. I'm the best. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. that. Because then you're isolating yourself from that. And the conversation then becomes a lecture. And I don't know shit about shit. I just know what uh, uh, makes me angry about stand-up. You know Uh, about boudets. You already talked about that. uh, uh, Boudet. No, boudet is what I call them. Oh, boudet. Because I'm fancy. Because that's you put your boudet. Boudet. Oh, yeah. Put your boudet on there. Well, that was the other side of it, too. It's just like, I just love silly, dumb jokes. Uh, uh, more than anything in the world. Can I it, can I tell you one I wrote? Yeah, please. So you know the joke. Uh, why is uh, seven afraid of uh, eight? Oh no, why is six afraid of seven? Seven eight nine. Seven eight nine. Why is eight afraid of nine? Why? Nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of that. <laughs> Nobody likes it, and I'm so proud of it. I love it. I love it. Why I is, love it. Why is it's it afraid of nine? Because nine eleven. I just the idea. I think that's worth a new special. <laughs> because an eleven is two towers. <laughs> oh Christ! <laughs> can, it's so dumb. Can I tell you my new favorite street joke? Oh please it's do. It's definitely please a street do. joke. Please do. Uh, knock knock. Who's there? Or wait, excuse me. I fucked it up already. It's been too long. Uh, what do you call a girl with no arms? I don't know. Just. She's just an amputee. That's it. That's all it is. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not the girl with no arms. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you this joke I heard? And it's fucking, and then we'll do, we got, but I will tell you this. This is fucking great. And it has to be done in an Australian accent because that's how I heard it. Oh, perfect. And it's the stupidest fucking joke. <laughs> he's like, so there's this guy and he's, um, and apologies to Australians. This is a bad Australian accent, but I've been drinking and I look a bit like Bill Butcher in that anyway. So it should be doing New Zealand. Um, I look, not a lot, but a bit. Um, so this guy well, maybe like a bit like uh, Bill who can't, uh, can't, only can't, eats can't. at the butcher shop but can't yeah. Bill who only eats at the butcher shop you know your character Bill high blood pressure <laughs> you know, Bobby blood pressure <laughs> Bobby blood pressure Bobby blood pressure he's just always bright red <laughs> and he's just like ah! and everyone's like you gotta calm down I'm fine he's like on holiday <laughs> <laughs> the ballad of Bobby Blood Pressure. <laughs> and it's just so I can't feel my left arm. <laughs> Where are my Cheerios? Oh my god, the ballad. Yeah, because they're good for your heart. <laughs> Bury me in a sack of Cheerios. <laughs> Alright, fuck. Okay, no, hold on. I gotta do the street joke because we have things to do. <laughs> so this is um bartender and he's like working and this guy comes in and uh, the guy's a regular looking guy but he's got a head that's half a fucking orange right so his head is half an orange so he sits down and the bartender's like this guy's odd right and he comes over and he goes can i get you something and the uh, the head the orange guy's like yeah can i can i get a beer mate he goes yeah yeah no no worries he brings him a beer and he puts it down and um the orange head guy st- starts pulling money out of his pockets and it just keeps coming right doesn't stop so there's orange, there's money everywhere. It won't stop. And the uh, the bartender goes, that's weird. You've got money coming out your pockets. And he goes, yeah, yeah. Orange guy just keeps drinking his beer. A little while later, the bartender comes back. He goes, can I, can I ask you a question? He goes, it's about the head, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. How'd you get a head like half a fucking orange? And he goes, funny story. I'm walking down the street and I see a lamp, right? And I rub it. <laughs> fucking genie comes out. Genie goes, I'll grant you three wishes. Hey, heads up! There's consequences, all right? So, like, like I love think that about the guy it. In the joke, has another joke has to another tell joke the bartender. To tell <laughs> so the guys, the genie's like, "Don't you know? What do you want? What's your first wish?" But don't forget, there's consequences. And I thought to myself, you know, what do I want? I go, well, I want, I want, no matter what, what pants I'm wearing, no matter what trousers, I always want money in my pockets. Doesn't matter, tons of money. He goes, so whatever I wear now, I've got money in my pockets all the time. And he goes. Well, what what you, what you wish for the second wish? And he goes, well, you know, I had to think about it. And I said to the, the genie, I go, I'm going to go get a coffee. I'll come back and I'll ask, I'll give you my wish. And the genie goes, yeah, but don't forget, every wish has consequences, right? So what you wish for, there might be a problem, right? I don't know what's, <laughs> what's happening with an Australian accent, but I can't stop now. It's a bit of Murray. It's yeah. got, I've gone fucking Murray, haven't I? From fucking, <laughs> from the, I've gone bloody, I've gone New Zealand. Present. I've gone present. <laughs> Jermaine. I've got, <laughs> I don't know what's happened. We'll just keep soldiering through. I'm so sorry to the great nation of Australia, both with of you. all of their soldiers. Um, and it's, <laughs> so, so, so he goes, uh, I come back and I go, I've got two coffees and I give the genie a coffee and the genie goes, if you come up with a, with an idea for your wish, he goes, yeah. You know what I think I want? I think I want a giant house 
we're all, my friends and family can live in the country, lots of land, never burns down, no problems with it, great house, lasts forever. And the genie goes, right, we've done it, but don't forget, wish yourself consequences. And the bartender goes, but what about the head? And the guy goes, oh, I wish for a head that's half a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> It's the dumbest joke. It's so stupid. <laughs> like, there's so much to unpack. Oh, Why would he Christ. do that? Why would he do that? I need you to type that out so I can tell my dad. <laughs> oh, he would love that. You know what? Uh, you know what it's time for. Let's get half an orange. It's time. For <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, let's You know how this works. You know, this works, even though if if anyone who doesn't at home, I found a thing, random topics, we talk about them. Fucking yeah. All right, so (laughs) there's no Mikey, so we're doing this. We're doing this with me. So I'm just doing this. All right. First one. How often do you stay up past 3 a.m.? Why is that the number? Ooh. They got a shift to cover? Not not much anymore. No. No, not much. You got a kid now. No, I know, but I I still still used to. Well, because I would have weird out. Yeah, not 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 often. No, I three a bit late. I talk her out like around midnight, no problem. Yeah. Though. Well, you could, three a.m.'s a bit late. Like I used to be up until I used to come off shows. Depends if I've done a show, I can stay up till three a.m. No problem. But if I'm not doing anything, like if I've just been working all day, like right now I do all this fucking ridiculous admin bullshit, social media crap. I mean, it's exhausting because you're just doing nothing but doing yeah. a lot of it. Um, but if I do a show, the adrenaline keep me going. But after three. Like, what's happening after after three? You're starting to get into it. This time of year, you're starting to get into it. The sun's going to come up Two soon. o'clock, I started to feel self-conscious anyways. Yeah. Right? right? Like, what, what like am I, I doing up? Like, if I'm not in the bushes checking out some lady, what the fuck am I doing up at this time of in night? In the you bushes know what I mean? checking out some lady. We do have to do that. And then also, I have to wonder what she's doing up at this time. At that point, I start wondering. Because <laughs> now I'm concerned about her. I'm like, hey, I'm out here jerking off. You're the one in there who's still not asleep. You got work in the morning. I know you have work in the morning. I know where you work and what time. And quite frankly, you're going to be late. Like, you get concerned. You're stalking her and you get concerned. <laughs> you're like, her life's in a shambles. I need help her. You know what I mean? Yeah, every time I catch you in my backyard at 9 o'clock, I'm up until 3 in the morning. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> that's, like, that's what she's doing. But the whole time, you're like, why is she up so late? What's wrong with her? Is she feeling okay? Were, were you ever that kid? I used, I, 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 and I still am to this day. Like, uh, I live on Broadway now, mm. and it's a it's a loud, loud street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's uh, always people coming and going, because it's mm-hmm. commuter street, too. And I can sit on my bed, not until three necessarily, but I can sit on my patio and just chain smoke and watch fucking mm-hmm. drugs. Like, I'm so invested I love people in watching. Night. I love I people love watching. It. I would, I mean, and that's the thing, is too, is, like, I think that if, if I was to go back to the day of not, like, not having a child, no responsibilities, because, I mean, come hell or high water, he's going to have to go to school. Otherwise, I'm going to have to pretend he's sick again, because <laughs> I'm hungover and I can't take him. Yep. I'm just kidding. No one <laughs> watches this. Uh, <laughs> no, but true. It's like, I, I'm like, he comes first. So it's like, it's like, if I, but if I have a day when I can, like, stay up, and I, I will sometimes sit and look out the window and, like, stare at what's going on. But, like, I find that nowadays, too, with, like, like, it's like when I'm on holiday, that's a thing I can do 100%. I can just sit there and stare. Like, we went to um, Uculet and uh, Tofino uh, yeah, last weekend. Be beautiful. It's beautiful. And we had a little a little balcony on the um, the old hotel room there. And uh, you could see, like, there were people at, at a campground across the way, across the water, coming and going and stuff. And that was fun. Like, I could have sat there all night drinking and watching that if I hadn't got to get up early. So, that, that kind of stuff. I but you do. don't play video games at all, do you? No. No. No, I'm not a video game guy. Okay, I got a game uh, Thanks to that, that judge. I could stay up until. <laughs> So <laughs> I've got a restraining order. For, the last time I was Steam. up until three in the morning, a buddy and I, uh, uh, one of my best friend back home, uh, he and I will always try to find two player uh, co-op games. Something mm-hmm. just like yeah. to fuck around with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we found this game and I'm not making it up. It's a, a, a called Police Simulator. Uh, it's made by a German company. Uh, okay. Who was basically like, do you want to know what it'd be like to be a, an American uh, an police An American officer? police officer? Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and, and the first, like, four hours of it are just, like, uh, hitting people for parking tickets and stuff. But you still have access to all of your weapons. Uh, and we died playing this. Like, I would love playing like play people, that on people Twitch. People jaywatching, and all of a sudden you turn, or jaywalking, and all of a sudden you turn into GTA oh. and just pop them. You know what we should do is we should I have you guys so play fun. this, and I'll just do the Twitch voiceover. 
talk shit about it because it would be very fun. I do love that idea. I would be very much fun. I would very because I often thought because years ago we used to play Call of Duty, me and uh, Chris Gordon, and uh, he, he one of his roommates at the time was like a ranked Call of Duty player, one of the best in the world, like really good, like yeah. like top three hundred players in the world, and um, so he would fucking dominate, but I would wear the headset. So it would be. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's so gross. So I did the whole thing as Schwarzenegger once, and I did one as a hillbilly guy. He's like, hey, how y'all doing out there? Hey, you know, you ever take them breath strips, you put them on your eyes, that fucking wake you up right there. <laughs> and people are like, hey, cowboy, shut up. It's like, look behind you. It's like, <laughs> like just, mur- just, but just so in ridiculously like good at it. Good at yeah, it. And yeah, and then the people just couldn't say shit. And they're like, cowboy, join my team. I fucking come hunting it right where you right. What you doing, man? What's up? It's like Ford or Chevy. Get it right. <laughs> Ford. Fuck you. <laughs> just would be like, but like every just, because when you can do voices, that stuff becomes, I should easy. really be doing, if I was like a video game person, I would Twitch and more. I should do that. But I, I don't like, like, I don't play video games, but I do dumb shit with my voice. So I, I barely play like online so much anymore. Unless it's just with friends and just that inclusive environment because I'm afraid of 13 year olds. But it, at the same time. So am like, I, but for different reasons. Oh, They'll burn your skin off. They don't care. They'll knock you down. They're just fucking Take your mean, fucking wallet. Man. They're just fucking mean. 13 but year olds. Like I, I found uh, one of the things that gets under people's skins uh, more than anything online is outright positivity. Oh God! And that's so sweet oh. to me. That's so sweet. Hey I do guys, that to the trolls. I know I just died another, uh, like another, another time, another ninetieth time. Yeah. We're just here to have fun, though, right? Do, like, doing my best. It's a team, Wednesday guys. night. It's a Wednesday night, and you just get kids just like. Do you know how much time I have on this fucking thing? I'm only out of here for two hours. Yeah. Two hours, I yeah. get. <laughs> everything. Yeah, well, that's their crack. You're the crack oh, addict that doesn't care about crack. That no one wants a crack addict doesn't care about crack. Imagine being a crack addict. You just show up and you're like, I don't, I don't mind. Is that why Mikey's not here? <laughs> what? He's not doing he's crack. He's a crack addict who doesn't care about crack. But every if so Mikey, bad, Mikey, a Mikey would be the most positive crack addict ever. He'd be God, like, I crack. Miss him. I miss not, him so much. I'm so sorry. Crack- oh, I miss him too much. I miss him. I miss him. There's a there's an empty couch there where he could be. He's not there. That's where he sits? That's where he sleeps. We don't let him go home. <laughs> I think I know now no, why he's not here. <laughs> we, we, oh, fuck. We've got time for one more random. You want to do one more random? Beauty. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. Uh, uh, oh, Ooh, this is a good one. Okay. This is a good one. What technology from a science fiction movie would you most like to have? Ooh. Yeah, right. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Arthur D. Damn, motherfucker. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Sounded good, though. I wish Arthur D. Two had um, a JB Smooth voice from Curry Enthusiasm. I would. I. Beep, boop, beep, boop, Larry. Like an intergalactic translator, but imagine yeah. just like stumbling on an intergalactic translator and making prank calls at this point. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like, NASA like can't pranking connect. aliens? We, that's what I mean. Like, NASA can't connect with them right now, but all of a sudden you're you just can. like, what's up, loser? Dude, <laughs> just some Klingon picks up his phone, and you're like, you're like, hi, is Jack ass there? <laughs> Leroy Seymour Butts, Seymour like Mo from you're fucking just Simpsons. Having a great time together. Do you know what I mean? You just keep calling. Hi, is Amanda hug and kiss? What there? happened to the end of the human race? Well, the funny thing is. <laughs> They were actually going to be our friends, but we irritated the shit. We would irritate the shit out of them. Oh, though. I think so. We're the ticks of the well, universe. Because I think, I think, I, like, I, we, like, as a, as a, as a, as a species, we just love showing off too much. Like, if if aliens actually showed up and be like, "Do you want look look what we built? Look what mm. we built." There's a see that that big old tower. Let's the, the Eiffel Tower. Okay, it's, uh, <laughs> and they're it's just a, like, "What are you we, talking we, about?" We stack them. We stack them. And they're like, "See those pyramids we built? See that?" <laughs> and they're no, like, "We built those." You didn't. No, you no didn't we do built that. those. We no, we, we did. did and we just get in an argument with them. There's like, no empirical evidence that you did that. We did that. We oh did that. man, you know what would that. be the greatest thing is if the aliens showed up and the first thing they said is, "It's round." That's just the first thing they said. <laughs> Just with their fucking forehead bones. It's round. I do welcome our new cold earth. We came cold earth, cold earthers. I'm a wide supremacist. Fat people are nothing. That's what I say. (laughs) Fuck you, thin fucks. This is how it is. All right. I'll burn a fucking McDonald's symbol in your front lawn. I don't give a shit. (laughs) I got dressed up like the hamburglar. What would you do? Technology? food Hmm? Food pills? Food pills would be pretty good. No, technology, I think what I want... uh, 
I would like. Um, I mean, what are we talking? It has to be from a science fiction franchise, right? Like a science fiction. Film. I mean, I kind of made up my answer, but I think that's no. That, I mean, that's you know, that's a good. Right? There's there's global there's universal translators in Star Trek, right? Right, that's yeah. fine. I think probably. Um, well, I mean, they're almost here, but replicators. Because I think Ooh. that would solve a lot of problems. Because all of a sudden, scarcity would no longer be an issue. So you couldn't you could never say as like, well, this Lamborghini is worth a lot because you can't afford them. It's like, well, I fucking made one. Like it's like all of a sudden, and they are coming. There is there is technology. 3D printers. Three, well, no, past that, there's they're, they're starting to get it down to molecular level where you can three D print food. So that's going to change the world. You three D yeah. print food. You can make food for people. You can drop instead of dropping fucking bags of rice, you drop a replicator. Sure, you're going to flatten a couple of kids, but you drop the replicator down, and then they, and the thing is, the replicator can make more replicators. So problem solved. Yeah, but then uh, AI like Chat GPT kind of thing starts to implement, yeah. or like get too involved, and all of a sudden you have an apple with like a dick in the middle, and you don't know it, and you go to buy it. And there's but a, people would do that anyway. A, a, as soon as you get replicators, people are going to replicate things they want to fuck. There's a, 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 no, no. I guess it's the same idea, like prank food. Kind prank of food. Idea? I do love that. Pranking people with food would be great. What if you had a restaurant and all it was was like prank food? I'd probably people, still be open. People. <laughs> 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 hey, that's the only job I've ever had, really. <laughs> The only part-time job I've ever had. The three. I do have a T4 for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, during the height of COVID when we were allowed to do shows, I uh, I took a shift as a bartender at Alex's bar, and then it didn't work out exactly right, but it was pretty fucking fun. That was the best. I didn't realize yeah, I'd actually so have to be fun. doing bartending shit. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and you're like, you need to actually work. I was like, well, what? Well, that was the agreement, but it was also, I mean, we knew what it was, and it was so much fun. I didn't know you. Th I didn't think you had any understanding. And the thing is, it was going great because most people there for the show, but then there was that couple that didn't speak any English that were there and had no idea well, what was happening. Just, they and they just day. thought I was an insane bartender, like I was a fucking Monty Python character who was just yelling at the bar because I kept telling people to shut the fuck up and then like doing jokes and then people were laughing. Because well, that was the thing is we couldn't tell people to shut the fuck up because we we weren't, weren't doing technically a show. doing a show. You were just happened to be a loud bartender. A loud bartender. Which and, I mean, it's, you know. And, and 99% of the room what was aware of what we were not doing. And then there was this one Spanish couple. That did not know. And did not care. They did not care. I did not care. And you know what? More power to them because I was about this far from them. Oh, and yeah. I'm a loud motherfucker. Oh, like, yeah. I did not. And I did, like, two hours that night because I did a bunch, and then it was a break, and then I did a bunch more. And it's not like they didn't know. It, it, they must have thought that, like, I was just, oh, this is a novelty bar in Vancouver. Yeah. There's this insane man who obviously is not a good bartender <laughs> who just yells. Spends 20 minutes making a rum and coke. Oh, God, if that. <laughs> it, probably more like 45. I, the one thing is it's like, what's in it? You know, I <laughs> well, that, was, that was my favorite. You would you would put the glass on the on the bar. Yeah. Drop an ice cube in and then hold the ice cube yeah, scoop. Yeah, and then just yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah. And then throw another ice cube in. Yeah. And then a splash. And then just keep going. Yeah, and it yeah. was a 20 minute rum and yeah, coke. Yeah, a 20 minute rum and coke. But you know what? You get what you pay for. Yeah, right? exactly. You, get, you know what I mean? You get you you pay for a rum and coke. You get a show. Hey, deal. Not bad. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? I went to, uh, have you seen that video of that guy uh, making that old fashioned? He's like, this, he's like this fucking hipster bartender. Guy. It's obviously not American or Canadian. He's not North American. He's got to be French or something, Italian. He's got that look about him. What? No. Like superior, but Euro trash. And he, he's wearing like, and he does this video of, of making an old fashioned. And it's the most irritating, irritating fucking thing you've ever seen. Oh, you it takes him. Speed. Probably, well, I think the video is five minutes long, literally five minutes, to make one old fashioned. It doesn't even look, and it's four roses too. It's not even great. Bur like, what the fuck are you doing? He makes it, and it's not bad, but he's not, and he makes it, and he like puts like he, he like brands the ice, and he puts it in, he's like, uses three different glasses, and he mixes the old fashioned separately, and he puts it's like, just fucking make the drink. Like, I'd so he frustrated. He brands the ice. He brands the ice. Like a fucking old west cowboy. Is this, a salt? Yeah. is this like a Salt Bay restaurant? It looks like it's that kind of fucking thing. I wonder if he's going for that. He's just like, he's trying to like fucking do the old, it's the most irritating fucking, I'll send it to you. It's the most, it's one of those I things where you're it. like, you're like, I would wring his fucking neck because if I came into your, first of all, I'm not ordering a cocktail. To me, ice is a cocktail. All right. So if, if I'm ordering a fucking cocktail, I'm, I show up. There to drink, you better fucking pour the booze. Don't do this whole dancing around fancy. No. That's how you get your hand bitten off. You ever see Tiger King? That's how that shit happens. That's fair. Right? You do that with bourbon with me? Hmm. I'm never fucking going to financially recover exactly. from this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we have to go. 
What, what, what can people, what can I, how can I tell people to find you other than walking down the main street at night looking for a man smoking and staring in the audience in the distance? Uh, I don't know. I'm a kind of a happy recluse. Uh, I, oh, actually, uh, the happy recluse is my favorite. I, I am working on a, on a, on a weird pod, like a mini series podcast of trying to get, uh, one of my best friends, uh, of course I'll do it. Absolute super oh, fan, uh, 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 Conan O'Brien super fan did. We're trying to get him to meet Conan O'Brien. Oh, okay. It's kind of the premise of it. We're still working on it right now. Do you want to call Conan? You don't have his number, do you? Yeah, of course. No, you fucking we all, don't. Show business, we're all connected. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> of course I don't. No, I, have, I have a Conan O'Brien's phone number. It's not the Conan. That's the problem. It's not the one. I have one. He works at a Foot Locker in Duluth. He's uh, a nice guy. I, I would say... Uh, I, that what you should do is you should have, <laughs> find one other Conan O'Brien. Well, we were we, 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 we thought we were going to make it extra hard. We were just going to try to find Marty Short first and then get uh, 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 him in touch with us. Marty Short. I think you can find Marty Short. On what's, Cameo. What's he doing? Is he on Cameo? He might be. Well, I know he's doing uh, Only Murders in the Building. I had a dream. Show. Have you seen that yet? No. Oh, it's so much I had fun. a dream of doing, like, I thought I would do a, po- I'd do a, write a sitcom with all these famous actors in it and just get them to read their lines on Cameo and they just cut it all together. <laughs> That was just COVID. <laughs> like, this is my show. <laughs> yeah, it's called the COVID com. It's called sick COVID. <laughs> 2020, 24 Long hours of COVID. Um, so we're, no social media. No. Yeah. You're a ghost. I, I, yeah, you're a, you're a ghost. SAS agent. I, 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 I walk around uh, with my daughter uh, in Mount Pleasant. You can bump into me there. Uh, other than that, uh, go see local comedy. Keep listening to this podcast. <laughs> I don't know. No, that was really nice of you. I mean, I mean, I would, I would think you should be like, hey, and also buy my line of turkey sweaters. But I'm not going to tell you how to merchandise yourself. Well, I just know how to buy the turkey that's going to rot. I don't know how to knit. Uh, well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. I just me, have man. one thing to say: the Earth is always cold. There is no heat. All right, you're being lied to by the air conditioning companies. Fucking frigid air owns your ass. All right, sorry. I gotta, you know, I gotta keep him pacified because that's how I pay the bills. Um. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much to the lovely Harbor Podcast Studios. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, Jordan. Thank you so much. And Podcast Dog. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. Uh, Mikey, we miss you. We love you. Um, please come back home. I, I, won't, I swear to God I won't hate you with the newspaper again. I swear to God. That was one time I was just really upset. Really upset. But you know what you did. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Alex. Thanks so much wonderful. for having me, man. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Please, um, you can watch my special um, on 800 Pound Gorilla Media. It's called As Good As or Better Than. And it's been, by the way, if you thank you so much for everyone who's, it's fucking, the, the response has been uncomfortable. Like, I'm not used to things going well, so you're kind of fucking my brand. That's one thing I will plug is I think my laugh is somewhere in your special. Oh, it is, for so 100%. I, I am plugging your special. 100%. There that's, you go. That's what's going to take you to the next level. I think so. <laughs> Thank you so much, and that's What's Wrong This Week.